at VMworld 2016. Joining me on the whiteboard is Prish Gupta from Cisco. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, George. You know, Prish, uh, one of the things that I've been doing these videos for several years now, and of course, all flash is a, a hot topic all the time. And it seems like it's the cure for everything, right? And, and clearly, in virtualization in particular, it's made a big difference. But we're moving well beyond that now, and now we need to start thinking differently about how we implement these things and how we operate and live with them day to day. I know that you guys have done a lot of work in that. Can you take us through what you guys are working on? Absolutely, George. Okay. So, as you rightly said, enough has been said about designing part of the all flash array, what you require for a SAN for that. But what I'm going to do today is talk about implementation on operations. Okay. When customers receive those equipments in their data centers, how do they foster the implementation without any errors? So basically, and once you get it out of the box, now what, right? Yes, and like how soon can you provision those, right? right? Like is it going to take weeks, is it going to take months, or probably minutes, right? right? Yeah, so you just bought the fastest thing on the planet, but if it takes you three weeks to get it going, <laughs> what good does yeah, it do? Yeah, and right? that's so true as a challenge, right? Customers are trying to solve, but you know, there are gaps. So what we have done recently, that on our all storage networking system, mm -hmm. all our storage networking switches, that's the Cisco MDS 9000 product line, mm -hmm. we have the USB ports. Okay. Right Now you can use those USB ports for anything, virtually like copying or pasting anything. Right. But now we have automated the switch configuration via that. Okay. So you can take a USB stick, plug into a switch, mm -hmm. boot it up, and it's going to load the configuration files it's going to load the license files and the software images. So I can bring my switch online much, much faster than I used to. Absolutely. Okay. Plus, I mean, you don't have to wait for the switch to arrive. You can make the ready, you know, make ready the configuration, the license, the software images. I mean, it's all on a laptop probably. Okay. Move it to the USB drive and hand it over to probably a facilities guy who's going to rack mount the switch. Oh, that's awesome. Right. Yeah. So that's one thing. Okay. The second is network based provisioning. Now, yeah. USB based provisioning is really cool and it gets rid of all the, you know, console cables and you know the walking to data centers right but let's say if you have to configure 20 switches right or 50 switches mm -hmm. now you have to touch like all 50 of them yeah. you want to avoid that so okay. what you can do is connect the network cable between your management network and the management port okay. on mds switches okay and the switch is intelligent enough now to contact a dhcp server ask the address automatically okay download a script which would further download the configuration files, the software images, and license. So then I can spin up um, a dozen, if I needed to, switches yes. with it, just like that. Yes. I mean, I got a case study that I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. That customer bought like 700 switches. Wow. They used it. And not just that, it's one time. You configure it one time. And next time, let's say next quarter, you have five more switches arriving. Yeah. Plug into a network. It's boom. Well, I would think the other thing, in, in, in addition to a huge time savings, is it also eliminates a lot of chances for error, right? Yes. I mean, you know, you have a centralized server for maintaining your configuration files, mm -hmm. and most of the basic configuration is same, right? right? We just change the IP addresses. We right. just change the switch names. Right. But most of the configuration is same. But if we do it manually, I mean, all of us are human beings. We right. make mistakes. Yes. But well, I, I don't make any mistakes, but that's a different <laughs> You're <thing>. perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so now let's talk about the other part, operations. Sure. Right. So right now I'm, I'm, I'm assuming this we're talking about day-to-day -day living with the environment, right? Yes. Okay, so take so us through that. Now that our switches have been provisioned, mm -hmm. let's go to operations part. Now, traditionally, you are aware that we have a Cisco NXOS CLI. Right. You can SSS to the switch, or you can use DCNM, the Cisco Data Center Network Manager, which is a GUI tool. Right. But, you know, we need people to make that change there. Sure. How about when there are newer applications specifically designed for all flash array data centers? Right. You know, let's say we want to test those things in a DevOps environment. Oh, sure. And we want to implement or check, do the testing mm -hmm. in a real network, not in a test environment. Okay. So we need some automation there so that you know we can make, quickly make the changes and remove the changes when the test is done. Okay. Huh. So we have RESTful APIs on vCenters. We have RESTful APIs on, on our storage arrays. Okay. So that thing is done, but what we have done on storage networking on our Cisco MDS switches, we have the native RESTful APIs write on the switches. Okay. So you know the application that you're writing, you can make a RESTful API call to the switch. The switch will make the changes that you're looking for. For example, let's say you make an API call to, make, to provision a new VM. Mm -hmm. You make an API call to provision a new LAN. Now you have to set up the path. So right. you can make another RESTful API call to MDS switches, and it will configure the zoning there. Okay. So, right. so in, 
So now with the, the RESTful API interface, I can kind of complete that stack, right? Because exactly. the, the network was sort of the missing piece there, right? Yes. And that's got to, again, just really improve provisioning times when a new application needs to be spun up. Absolutely. Or like that. It's one time effort. Next time, one single command or like one click, it's all up and working. And, and I would think that would work well in, in a lot of these environments where we're dealing with sort of temporary instances of applications that spin up, have a very short life cycle, so I could go in, provision the switch, and then unprovision it just as importantly, correct? Yes, I mean, spe specifically if you talk about flash-based data centers, mm -hmm. like these are like not probably looking for some legacy applications. These right. are like new applications which sure. are looking for much higher agility. Yeah. And that's where you require those kind of tools. Yeah. So that, and that's an important part, being able to clean up after yourself when you do these sort of things. Yes, Otherwise, that's so important. I mean, I've seen customers, they configure zones and never get rid of it. Right. So then you can, now you can automate the provisioning and deprovisioning. Yes. That. Great. Well, Prash, thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you, George. So there you have it. There's more than just implementing an all-flash array. Optimizing the network to make sure it's programmable, to get things provisioned much quicker, and then in operations, making sure applications can now talk to the infrastructure and, and customize it as they need is the next big step in creating that agile data center. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today.